Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Mr. Registrar, could you open the proceedings, please? Thank you, Mr. President. Trial Chamber 3 of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, composed of Judge Dennis Byron presiding, Judge Berdal Gustav Kam, and Judge Van Jensen, is now sitting in open session today, Monday, the 3rd of December 2007, for the commencement of trial in the matter of the, the prosecutor versus GAA, case number ICTR-2000, Dash 90, dash R77, dash T. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Registrar. Could we have appearances, please? Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. Uh, the prosecutor is represented uh, by myself, Richard Karijesa, and I'm appearing with Abdullah Seye, Rene Famadenga, Florida Kabasinga, and Dennis Mabura, most obliged. Thank you, Mr. Garadis. Uh, Your Honours, my name is CJ Maruma, Defence Counsel for GAA, and I'm appearing on my own. Well, thank you very much. Um, Counsel. It is my understanding that the that the um, accused uh, would wish to have count two of the indictment read to him, so he could change his plea. That's correct, Your Honour. Yes, um, Mr. Registrar, could you uh, put the count two of the indictment to the accused, please? The International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, the prosecutor against GAA, case number ICTR 2007 90 R77 I. Amended indictment. The prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda hearing after the tribunal, pursuant to his authority under Article 17 of the Statute of the Tribunal and Rules 77 and 91 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of the Tribunal, hearing after the rules, charges GAA with contempt of the tribunal, contrary to Rule 77A, and G of the rules on the basis of the concise statement of fact here too, all of the facts being relevant to the count hearing. Count two, page 10. Contempt of the tribunal. The accused is further charged with personally committing the offense of, of contempt of the tribunal, contrary to Rule 77A and G of the rules, for knowingly and willfully interfering with the administration of justice in the period from on or about 1st March 2004 up to and including on or about 31st May 2005 in diverse locations in Kigali Rural and Kigaliville Prefecture, Rwanda, and in Arusha, Tanzania, by accepting inducements and the promise of a bribe or reward in the form of a substantial amount of money for knowingly and willfully providing a false statement on 17th March 2004 for use in the appeal against conviction and sentence of Jean de Dieu Kamuhanda, case number ICTR 99 54A A, 
and knowingly and willfully giving false testimony under solemn declaration on 18 May 2005 at an evidentiary hearing before the appeals chamber of the tribunal in connection with that appeal in Arusha, Tanzania, as specified in paragraphs 5, 6, and 7 above. The accused rendered false testimony as particularized in paragraphs 5 to 15 above. Prior to giving false testimony, the accused received an accepted inducement from one Leonidas Nshogoza, a defense investigator during the trial of Jean de Dieu Kamuhanda. The accused also accepted from Leonidas Nshogoza the promise of a bribe or reward of one million Rwandan francs, which was to be paid to him after giving the false te testimony before the appeals chamber. The accused was introduced to Leonidas Nshogoza sometime in early March 2004 by a woman known to the tribunal as witness GEX, who testified as defense witness at a Rule 115 evidentiary hearing before the appeals chamber of the tribunal in relation to the appeal against conviction and sentence of Jean de Dieu Kamuhanda, case number ICTR-99-54A, dash 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 A, in Arusha, Tanzania. The accused met with Leonidas Nshogoza in the presence of GEX on five or six occasions in the period from on or about 1st March 2004 up to and including on or about 31st May 2005. GEX would inform the accused about the scheduled meetings with Leonidas in Shogoza and they would travel together from Gikomero to Kigali. The meetings were usually held at Stella Bar in Remera, Kigali, Rwanda. Leonidas Nshogoza initially told the accused that he was writing a book about the facts and conduct of Jean Didier Kamuhanda during the 1994 events in Gikomero. He told the accused that he was interested in him because he had had access to his file and knew that the accused had testified at a tribunal against Jean Didier Kamuhanda. He told the accused that he needed a statement from him relevant to the events in Gikomero of April 1994 for use in his forthcoming book. In the course of their second and third meetings in early to mid-March 2004, Leonidas and Shogoza showed the accused a statement which he wanted the accused to sign. The statement was a recantation of the testimony the accused had given during the trial of Jean de Dieu Kamuhanda. On 17 March 2004, in Kigali, Rwanda, Leonidas Nshogoza took the accused to a notary and asked the accused to sign a statement in Kenya, Rwanda and a copy in French, in which the accused rendered false testimony, recanting the evidence he had given in the trial of Jean de Dieu Kamuhanda. The accused knowingly and willfully signed the said statement, knowing them to be false. During each of the said meetings with Leonidas and Shogoza, the accused received and accepted from Leonidas and Shogoza inducements comprising of 10,000 Rwandan francs together with a meal and drinks. 
on one occasion when the accused was being prepared for, for his impending testimony before the appeals chamber sometime between April and early May 2004 in Kimihurura, Kigali the accused received and accepted further inducements from Leonidas Nshugoza comprising of 20,000 Rwandan francs a meal and drinks on another occasion between April and early May 2005 at the ICTR offices in Kigali after being informed that he would be required to render his false testimony on 18 May 2005 at an evidentiary hearing before the appeals chamber in Arusha the accused accepted the promise of a bribe or reward of 1 million Rwandan francs from Leonidas Nshogoza. The said amount was to be paid to the accused by Leonidas Nshogoza after the accused's testimony. In anticipation of the promised bribe or reward of 1 million Rwandan francs, the accused knowingly and willfully rendered false viva voce evidence on 18 May 2005 before the appeals chamber in Arusha, Tanzania, as particularized in paragraphs 5 through 15 above. The accused personally committed the above offenses of false testimony under solemn declaration and contempt of the tribunal, which are punishable under Article 14 of the Statute of the Tribunal and Rules 91G and 77B and G of the rules, respectively. Dated at Arusha, this 28th day of November, 2007, signed by the prosecutor, Hassan Bubaka Jalo. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Registrar. Um, GAA, could you please stand for that? Have you heard and understood the account that was just read out to you? Yes, I have heard what the registry official has said, Mr. President. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? I plead guilty and I am asking for forgiveness. I committed those offenses. I do acknowledge that and I am asking for pardon. No, <clears throat> you had previously pleaded not guilty to this offense. And now you have changed your plea. Um, were you um, encouraged, pressured to do so, or do you do it freely and of your own will? Mbere y'urukiko, ibyo byaha byombo kwa ari bibiri narabikoze nta muntu nta muntu wabimpase before this tribunal, I am acknowledging that I committed those two offenses. Nobody brought pressure to bear on me to make the confession. Prior to this, I did not acknowledge those two offenses, but today I am acknowledging having committed them. I had earlier uh, accepted that I committed only one crime, only one offense. Nobody forced me to plead guilty, and I've done so uh, with my uh, conscience. Okay. 
Ok, yo me acepto. Una cosa. Thank you. The trial chamber now enters a finding of guilty on the second count. The accused had previously uh, pleaded guilty on count number one. We now find them guilty on count number two. Mr. Prosecutor. If it pleases your honors, um, the accused having now changed his plea in respect of the second count to one of guilty, uh, I believe what remains is for the chamber to test the validity of both pleas for counts one and two uh, pursuant to rule 62B. Oh, I thought I had just done that. As it pleases your honors, uh, if, that, if you're satisfied, mm -hmm. so is the prosecutor. Yeah. Most of We are, we, are, we are satisfied from the answers given to the, by the accused that the plea was made freely and voluntarily, that it was informed, he, that it was unequ unequivocal, and that it was based on sufficient facts for the crime and the accused participation in it. We are satisfied of that now. Uh, I'm most obliged, Your Honours, and in that event, uh, I would invite um, <coughs> the Chamber uh, to enter a conviction in respect of both counts on the basis of the guilty pleas. Well, I thought I had already done that as well, <laughs> <laughs> because I told the registrar that we have found him guilty on both counts. I was really expecting that we'd move to discuss the question of sentencing. We have read the plea agreement which has been filed. Um, uh, on the face of it, it seems to accord with principle and it seems consistent with our appreciation of the um, of reasonable penalties uh, for the crime for which he has pleaded guilty. So we are willing to move straight into the issue of sentencing. There was one particular inquiry we had, we had though, which I think I should ask you about, because based on the nature of the charge, we wondered if there was a reason why the person who offered the inducement to the accused has not been indicted. Uh, Your Honours, that is a matter uh, within the discretion of the prosecutor, and uh, I'm informed that that matter is being looked into. Uh, at this moment, that is all I can state. I, I think the court, at the chamber, we find it um, something which we feel that we should express disapproval of. I, I will convey the sentiments of this chamber, Your Honours, to the prosecutor, and uh, will revert to the chamber in due course. Thank you. Uh, in respect of uh, sentence, Your Honours, um, we have nothing to add to what is contained in the plea agreement, and uh, I believe um, my learned counsel, defence counsel, um, may wish to have something to say. Thank you, Mr. Carrigan, Yes, counsel. Yes, Your Honours, my... <coughs> Instructions from witness GA was to accuse GA was to um, request for an adjournment to enable us uh, prepare uh, material for mitigation, and it was anticipated that uh, we may need to call witnesses for that, and. At this juncture, I would ask for 
an adjournment to be able to prepare for sentencing, for, for, for mitigatory evidence to be brought in? Council, we do not think that that is a necessary or appropriate in these circumstances. Um, a plea agreement has been entered into. We have studied the agreement. We have looked at the legal surrounding legal provisions. And we are satisfied that the, the agreement which has been reached is in accordance with principle and that the punishments to which we all have agreed are punishments which the court thinks could reasonably be imposed. In these circumstances, it is completely unnecessary to um, receive any mitigatory or further evidence on this matter. So we expect to impose a sentence today. Well, Your Honours, um, indeed those were my early instructions and uh, in the interest of a fair trial, at least I would ask for a short adjournment so that I can confer with uh, my client uh, before we can, I can be able to address the court. By short adjournment, what do you mean? Uh, I, I, I mean I would certainly need to, to, to appraise my client of the development which has just occurred. Yes, we know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Half an hour, my lord. Okay, the court will rise for 30 minutes. I'll rise. Please be seated. Uh, Mr. Maruma, are you ready to present your submissions? I am ready, honest. You may proceed. Excuse me. My system is a little noisy. Could you provide some assistance? Your Honours, I think I need a little help with my system here. Thanks. My Lord, um, Your Honours, the accused stands convicted of the two counts, giving false testimony and contempt of the tribunal. The accused stands convicted on his own plea. The sentence for these offenses under the statute is serious. It's a fine of $10,000 and or imprisonment for five years. It is serious to that extent. 
It's, however, not genocide, which would have been a much more serious offense. The accused in this case has made a timely plea. From the very start when he appeared before this tribunal, he pleaded to the one count. His plea to the second count was strictly not a change, but he only needed to be advised what the essence of those facts are which he had agreed to and did agree that, in fact, it amounts to commission of the offense in the second count. So really, the credit is to himself. The accused has expressed remorse. He did so from the very start when he made the appearance here. He did so again this morning. The nature of the sentence to be imposed does not require deterrence on the part of the accused. He is already aware of the seriousness of the offense to which he has pleaded. In determining the sentence, I invite this honorable chamber to take account of these mitigating circumstances as well as the following. The accused is still a young man of the age of 42, having been born in 1965. He has a significant family responsibility. He has five children, uh, sorry, a wife and five children of his own, and has a family of his elder brother a wife and three children. Three of the children he is on and under his care are going to secondary schools, privately played at the moment, and the others are in the primary school. One child is only two months old and was born when the accused was already in detention. The accused is the sole breadwinner of the family. He is of very meager means. Having only half an acre to survive on and one cow. A cow which produces only one cup of milk a day. The accused is otherwise a responsible member of his community. He is a leader in his cellul at the lowest level. He 
he does it on voluntary basis and is only paid an allowance. Depending on the nature of the sentence that this chamber will pronounce this morning, he has a chance that he may be integrated back into the society and continue to provide this valuable service to the saloon. The accused person is himself a genocide survivor. He lost 87 members of his family during the genocide, including both parents. He still conducts arrangements to carry out decent burials for members of his family to this day. And it is to this extent that uh, the accused person is still a protected witness of the ICTR to date. Every April, in their country, in the accused country, Rwanda, they do a commemoration of the genocide. And on account of what he's gone through, he gets traumatic fits when that kind of time approaches. And that is only five months away. The accused person has provided considerable cooperation to the prosecutor in the course of their investigations. He stands ready to continue in that process in the days and months to come. And finally, no, just before finally, I would wish to mention that there is one child of the ones that the, that the accused person looks after who is in a serious traumatic condition a child of 13 years and on discovery that his uncle is in this situation has worsened his condition. Uh, Your Honours, the accused person being as vulnerable as I've indicated before was under the direction of very, very powerful inciters who led him to the commission of this offence. The persons were at the time officers of the ICTR. Persons who are legally qualified.
and vulnerable as he is, he believed them when he informed when they informed him that this would not amount to much in the ICTR. They are, it's okay with the ICTR. The accused person, also naive as he may be, seeing that he was hosted by the ICTR, seeing that he was transported here in the same beachcraft that brought him initially. Naively believed that it was indeed uh, going to be okay. Only to find, as he now does, that it was a serious interference with the administration of the tribunal. A matter for which he profoundly expresses remorse. The fact also that he was of humble means also rendered him vulnerable. to the inducements and persuasions of the insiders. Your Honours, the offences for which to which the accused has pleaded guilty offer the option of a fine or a prison sentence. In the common law, it is taken that um, whenever there is such an option, the framers of the legislation take it that either the one, and in this case the fine, would serve the justice of the sentence for the crime for which an accused is convicted. I would wish that the tribunal would be persuaded by this common law reasoning. Indeed, I have indicated that the accused is of humble means, and that indeed would be borne in mind in determining the sentence of that option should the chamber wish to consider it. It is these mitigating circumstances that I would humbly invite the, your owners to consider in determining the appropriate sentence to be meted, be meted out to the accused, to the offences for which he has been convicted. I am most obliged. Thank you very much, Mr. Maruma. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, do you wish to... Uh, your Honours, as I said earlier, uh, We do not propose to say anything other than what is contained in the plea agreement, Mr. Blige. Thank you very much. Um, we will consider the plea in mitigation made by Council Baruma. We think it would take us approximately um, just about an hour, hour and a half. So the registrar would um, probably reconvene the court at approximately midday. We will rise now for a few minutes. All rise.
please be seated. Uh, we have decided on the sentence. Uh, as I had indicated before, we have accepted the plea agreement entered into between uh, the prosecutor and the accused. Um, we intend to file a written judgment uh, with our reasons within the next 24 hours. And so rather than have a, a duplicative statement of our reasons, we will simply announce that we have decided to impose a sentence of imprisonment for nine months for this serious crime which has damaged the integrity of the judicial proceedings of the tribunal. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Mr. Oblige the honors. Mr. Maruma. Oblige the honors. Thank you. The court will now rise. All rise.